How are we doing? This is Chris Desi, CEO of Silverback Social, founder of the Westchester Digital Summit, and we're here with Jeffrey Hazlett. He is the man, TV <laughs> host, radio host, best-selling author, just stepped off stage and just dropped the hammer on Westchester. It was fun. Wow. What is a good crowd. A little, they're a little slow this morning, but yeah, we woke them up. We woke the them up. caffeine to sink in a little yeah, bit, yeah. and then they get going. Need some little, espressos. Yeah, they little, need some Duncan, one of my sponsors. Oh, there <laughs> you hey, go. Hey, work them in. Sing them. That was boom. That was good. That was just seamless right there. So speaking of your sponsors, I mean, listen, you might be the hardest working man in show business here. You always have hard. stuff going on. Yeah. You're cranking it out. We visited your office in New York, and you were like, we're done with this office. We're expanding. We saw mm -hmm. some incredible pictures of what's going on in New York with the new office. Talk to us about your expansion, what you guys have in the pipeline. I know that you have a new book coming out. Yeah, new book. Give us the, give yeah us I got the a new book out, in man. September called Think Big, Act Bigger, The Rewards of Being Relentless to be published by Entrepreneur Magazine, which we're That might excited. be the best title I've ever I, it's heard It's pretty good. Well, life. you know, we always need to think, we always think big, but now the thing is really act bigger, and that's what it means, is to really get out there and make it happen. Yeah. You know, you, you know how many times we're in with meetings or groups and say, well, we don't have budget for that. Well, who gave you a budget? Change it. You know, who, who said you can't go do these things? And that's what it's really meant to be. It's like I get tired of the, whether I'm in a small group or a big group, I get tired of that. So we got the book coming out. We're doing our C-Suite Network, which is meeting all over the country. We have like three different conferences a year. We have the C-Suite TV, C-Suite Radio, C-Suite Book Club that are all part of that, part of the media company that we have. We're servicing about 1.5 million executives that are over 10 million. Although we do encourage anyone to want to watch our shows because uh, I have two television shows on there. We have others that have shows. We have five total television shows. We'll have 20, hopefully by the end of this year. I'm hoping for 20. Uh, but we keep adding them. Come, come, a show called Good Company. We've got Behind the Brand. We've got uh, Business Rockstar. So we've got some really great television shows. We've got some really great podcasts. And you mentioned the radio. I'm doing the CBS Play. It. I'm the anchor uh, for the business category, and we've got a great show. We had 18 million tweets last week. Uh, Yesterday, I had Kevin Jonas tweeting us out, Pierce Morgan tweeting us out, Gene Simmons tweeting us out, so it was just great. They've all been guests of the show. And uh, just some fabulous content. You know, I just recently had the, the president of the WNBA. Um, I had one of the key owners of uh, some of the Kentucky Derby horses because it was Kentucky Derby time. You know, so we have a mix. And then, then people like Gene Simmons and Kevin Jonas and Barbara Corcoran and Damon John and others. You know, I, I kind of mix it between celebrities and a little bit of business and talk about the business of their business and what got them really good at what they're doing. And it's a very candid discussion. And we talk about everything. And the WNBA, we really got into some gay and lesbian issues, which I thought was kind of interesting to talk about in terms of their, their audience that they reach. Because recently I saw that two of their key players you know, got married, and there really wasn't any press. But if you just saw that in the NBA, holy, boom. it would have boomed, blew player, up. Yeah. And, I, and I thought, well, is that a double standard? You know, And so we have the discussion about those things and what's right for business and what's not. So, yeah, we're, we're cooking it. We're having a blast. Talk a little bit about how this whole thing got started. I know when we first met, you mentioned about how compelling it was to give an insider peek into the C-suite and yeah. why that was so compelling. And you taught you you mentioned some statistics that frankly I had no idea about. Oh, about. it's probably about the size and reach. I mean, when you think of it, when you think about the C-suite, let's just take the C-suite five thousand, or let's say let's say one thousand, the Fortune one thousand. Just take the Fortune one thousand. Now, there's you take that times five corporate officers, roughly. That's 5,000 people. There are more people playing professional sports than there are in the Fortune 1000 leadership of, you know, of the world. And you know, I happen to be a Fortune 100 officer, so there's only 500. It's a very small community. So I take people inside the C-suite. And why do we do that? Because most people, 99% of the people that work at a company, have never even been into that C-suite, have never been on the floors of the executive offices, have never sat down in a boardroom meeting with those key officers and presented. So it's a very, very elite group. And not so much that they're you know, snobby or anything like that. It's just the time and the access and, and the way in which business processes work or procedures or the way in which people do planning schedules or so, that they don't get a chance to be inside it. And so we take people inside of that. And that's the unique feature, and which is very difficult. You know, it's not easy. You know, there's very few times that those, even those officers come together yeah. You know, when I was a Fortune 100 officer, I, I saw my chairman maybe once a month. We talked on the phone probably, you know, three or four times a month and then email maybe 10. So when you think about that, you would think it's a lot more. Right. You know, most people think, well, you're talking to them every day. Mm -hmm. 
No, you're not. You're really not because you're off. You're, you know, I'm hired to do a job. That's you're my doing your job, and I'm doing yeah. my job. So that's that. So it's kind of unique. So that we really love the show, and it's been very good. So you touch on a lot of really compelling people. I mean, Gene Simmons. That's, that for me, I was like, oh, you got to hang out with Gene Simmons. Who have been some of the favorite people? I got you fired, Gene Simmons, when I was on this. Uh, Gene Simmons oh, got right. fired yeah. on, on Celebrity <laughs> Apprentice when I was a judge on Celebrity Apprentice. So Gene, and I go way back, but I like Gene. He, you know, he's. He's, he's actually licensed over 3,500 products. He's been in the business for 40 some years at Kiss. Mm. Um, when you think about it, a very iconic brand. He's a smart guy. Mm. And you know, you, you don't get to be as successful as he is by being stupid. So yeah. he's got a lot of things to teach. And, and you, get past, you get past the showmanship and there's a real person there. And that's what I thought was unique is because in my podcast, which is called All Business with Jeffrey Hazlett, um, he was my very first guest. And, and, and it was interesting because I asked him his very first job and you could almost hear him tear up over the phone and he told me about the story of how he made a couple bucks and how he gave it to his mother and his mother said, you're my little man. And, and you could, I mean, I'm, I'm getting teary eyed just thinking about it too because it was a very touching moment in the show, you know. And then he says something, you know, outrageous like if you can't speak English, you shouldn't be in business in the United States, which we took and ran like crazy. So uh, because we wanted to make sure all the Korean Business Association and all the other ones got to, got to hear that. Sure, sure. <laughs> so it's a, it's, a little, it's a little unique. So you get a little bit, bit of, of both. So you just stepped off stage at the Westchester Digital Summit. Um, what are some of the things that you hear? And, and frankly, you've been all over the world speaking to C-level executives all the way down to solopreneur startup guys. What are, maybe give us like the top two or three questions that you get and the nuggets that you end up sharing with people to how to leverage digital marketing. I mean, you're you're yeah. a senior C-suite guy, but you're a social media expert. Like, well, you're but, this but guy I'm also a small business guy. Stuff. I mean, I have a small business. Yeah. I mean, you know, my business isn't you know billions, so it's right. still a small business. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing we always hear from people is, is time. So how do you get more efficient on time? And I always think that really focuses on great tools that are out there. You know, that's one. Two, the other thing is focus, is focus, 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 focus. Yeah. You've got to spend the time with the focus and, and decide what's important for you and what's important for your business and what, you know, three to five things you got to get solved, you know, that week. And a lot of folks get caught up in the minutia of other things rather than focus on those, those three to five things that are really going to move the needle. And that's really where they need to spend the time. Perfect. Well, listen, man, I thank you so much for your time. You dropped the hammer in Westchester. We greatly appreciate it. It's a great it. place. Yeah, yeah. Good, a great conference. You've been doing a great job. You get some of the biggest names in the business, and I'm just glad to be here. Thanks, Jeffrey. We hope to have you back next year. You got it. All right, man. Cheers. Take care.